So let's chat about this drawing right here. What I want to show you is how to get this dimension for this conical feature to be driving. So what driving means is that when I double click on it from the drawing, I can change the dimension, rebuild, and it'll change right on the drawing. It'll change the part as well. The other kind of dimension is when you come up here and use smart dimension, you just add a dimension to it, right? Notice how it's light gray. That's a different thing. When you click on it, you can't make any changes because it's driven. It's a reference dimension, essentially. So let's go to a part and figure out how we made this dimension driving. So I got a new part. I'm going to sketch. I want a revolved feature. So I'm going to go through this real quick just to get the general shape. So I got my lines in. I just want to uh, bring your attention to one thing. On that drawing, this surface is datum B. So I want it lined up with my origin. This part right here, this diameter, is going to be datum A. So the center line goes through the origin. That's why I did it this way. So let me add a couple of dimensions. Remember, since it's a round part, you want the diameter dimension. So you click on this line, click on the center line, and then move the dimension over here to get a diameter. So I'm just gonna type in random dimensions just because this is an example. So we've got everything dimensioned except for this conical feature. So when you go to apply a dimension to it, you'll want to put an angle, but you're not going to get the angle you want. So this is not the angle. This is only half the angle you want. This won't work either. Any of these will not work on the drawing. Okay. So what most people would do, you just use this dimension, cut it in half, and it would give you the same physical size part, right? So if you wanted 60, you could type in 30 degrees here and just remember to double it when you do a smart dimension on the drawing. But when you do that, you can't change it from the drawing. You have to go open up the part and change this. Okay. So what we want to avoid is having to do that. How we do it is with construction lines. So what I'm going to do of course, delete this dimension. I'm going to build a fake sym symmetric part over here. Okay, so I'm essentially just going to draw a triangle on this side of the part. What I'll do is make this point, this point symmetric with this center line. Okay, and as always, I can drag this and move it around. If you notice both of these lines are symmetric, they move together with any of these points, right? Everything's locked in except this angle. So what I'll do is add a dimension here, All right? So what did we say? It was supposed to be 60 degrees, All right? Now this one dimension will control this cone, right? It looks a little weird. But what you want is that dimension on the drawing, and this gets you there. So I'll exit the sketch. It's a revolved part, so I just leave this open and then let it go around this center line as the axis of revolution. It gets confused because it has multiple center lines, so you have to select which one you want. Click OK. Right. And now when I bring this into a drawing, and since we're here, I'll go ahead and show you. So I'm going to select the part I just made. I'll put it on the drawing. I only need this one view. I'll go to annotation, model items, select that cone, and our dimension we want is right here. So I can just move it around, and now I can change this dimension from the drawing. Okay, and then I go to rebuild, and it changes the part without having to open the part. So that's it for this video. Just wanted to show you how to dimension a cone with driving dimensions.